I believe we are moving significantly from a world that was simple, predictable, easy and clear, the world of the 50s to say the 80s, 90s, where most management theory, most organizational theory was developed, to a world that is volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous, the acronym VUCA, which you may have heard. So VUCA means the world itself, not just some of the trends, is changing in its state and its nature. Management theory, classical management theory that grew up in the 20th century tells us don't do innovation, don't do adaptation, don't do transformation because it's risky and it always is risky. Doing something new is always risky. It may not work the first time. But in the VUCA world, something very different occurs. We start to realize that it's actually more unsafe, more risky to not do adaptation, innovation and transformation because then we risk becoming obsolete to 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 change with the world's changes, we need a new kind of mindset, a new kind of leadership. Now, I call this leadership transformational leadership. It includes innovation, but it's not limited to innovation. Anywhere you want to create a lasting positive change in the way your team works, in the way you do uh, processes, in your uh, the way you work with clients, uh, it doesn't matter. It's about being able to change things at will, particularly being able to change, take changes that are going on outside your organization, which you have very little control over, and turning them into value internally. Now, research by Harvard uh, professors shows that over 80% of leaders are outmatched by the VUCA reality. On the other hand, the most creative, adaptive, responsive, flexible leaders deliver not 6% more, which is a good growth rate these days, not 60% more, but 600% more than the average leader. Uh, as a geek of transformation, a geek of change, I've put together a theory called biotransformation, um, and there are eight principles that we teach leaders and we teach organizations. And I'm going to share just one of them with you just to give you something to walk away with. Start enacting. And we talk about these two modes, control and protect mode and create and connect mode. And so control and protect mode is all this kind of stuff. You're really good at this. So I'm not going to bother talking about it. Best practice, basically. But create and connect mode is very different. It doesn't try and have the right answer. It tries to ask a better, more interesting question. It doesn't try and follow the rules. It tries to break the rules. It doesn't care so much about metrics and KPIs and promotions. It cares about meaning, about purpose. And you all have both of these modes. One is brilliant for exploiting a business model with continuous improvements, but one is what you need to create a new business model, a new service model, a new process model. But there is a sting in this tale because it's not that simple. If it was that simple, I'd be out of a job and there's a third brain network called the salience network and exists right in the emotional part of our brains and what we have realized in neuroscience i say we i'm including myself in the great uh, explorers of this uh reality is that our emotional state uh hijacks the mode it doesn't totally determine the mode but it's uh, influences the mode so much that if we are in states of stress and overwhelm and anxiety, uh, even if we look really good doing it, we will be in the wrong mode for innovation. So to summarize, we all have a box. The box is great, the box is useful, the box helps us get stuff done to time, to budget and under pressure. Or, when to breathe, when to take a moment, when to step back, when to ask someone how they're feeling, and to ask yourself how you're feeling and when to listen, when to reflect, when to ask a different question, when to reframe the problem, when to imagine, and when to invent. And that is the mode we need when we were doing anything to do with adaptation. And you need to do that first before you come back to cutting down ideas and making sense of them and analyzing them and using the data. Now remember, data is always about the past, not the future. It can't give you answers to the future, particularly in the VUCA world. And in summary, each of us can play our full part in forging a flourishing future for ourselves, our team, and our enterprise by beginning to master these two modes.